Jennifer Lant. I'm a Homeworks by Precept consultant. I've been homeschooling for nine years, and today I would like to talk about everyone's favorite part of homeschooling, correcting papers. One of the things that's really helped me is to make a station where I have everything that I need at my fingertips. So I've got all my teacher's editions for my younger son here, and the test binder with all the answer keys in it. I've got teacher's editions for my older son here. He does mostly online, so I don't need a lot of teacher's editions for him because the links to all of the answers are online. But I do like to teach the writing and grammar myself, so I've got a teacher's edition that I bought at a discount to use to teach him. So those are for him. I also have all my colored pens right here. I've got a stapler in case I need to staple some loose papers. Um, I've got a grade book for one son and another that I don't use much anymore because I use mostly the online system for my older son and I'll show you that in this video as well. Then up here I have got trays on the shelf and I have my boys turn their papers in right here. So my older son is taller and he turns his papers in in the, in the top tray and then my younger son turns his in in the second tray. So whether it is online or parent-led, all of their work that they have done goes in those two trays. Then after I check them, I return them to the boys in these trays. Again, the top one is for my older son and the bottom one is for my younger son. So let's take a look and see what we can um, correct today. I'm, I'm kind of simulating this because it is the summertime and I have sold some of last year's teacher's editions already, but I can still show you, give you a good idea of what we do. Okay, so we're gonna start with my younger son today because he is parent-led and I will show you how I correct his parent-led work. So he's in the second tray and I've got a couple loose papers here and I've got a book. Um, sometimes we keep our books together and sometimes I have the boys tear them apart and they get their own papers each day. Um, with English, sometimes I wouldn't even have my son turn it in up in the tray. Sometimes I just have him put it back on the shelf when he's done that day. And the next day, um, as whenever I go to teach him, we would just correct the previous day's work together. Um, whether I read answers or he reads answers, and then we can stop whenever he realizes he made a mistake, and we could take a look at why he made the mistake and learn the thing that he didn't really get the day before. So sometimes we correct papers together. But most often, um, they will turn in single loose sheets and I just kind of sort them by subject um, and hopefully there aren't too many there because you really should be doing it every day. If you're doing it every day, your child will see his mistakes and see um, what he needs to change, what he needs to learn, um, that way he's not practicing something incorrectly and it'll be better prepare him if you do it day by day. So this one is a math paper. Now this is math five and I only have the math six book here because I've already sold last year's book. So I'll just show you an example, but in my teacher's editions, I always have a sticky note that shows me where we are. So I'd open it up to where the sticky note is, where it's actually a little, it's like a plastic tab. They're sturdier than sticky notes and you can still read right through them. So I really like to use those in my teacher's editions and the boys like to use them in their books as well. Um, but what I do is then I go through and I check all the work and on this particular page, my son didn't see these two problems the first time around. He went down the left side of the page and just missed them. So I circle them with a color that'll stand out. Um, sometimes if there's like red on the paper, I will use blue, purple, or green. It just depends on what color the papers are. And then down here, he thought that this line, he measured 121 millimeters and they only needed him to say 120. So if there's something like that, that's just a little bit different, I will write it down. Otherwise, um, I will have him solve these problems again. So he needs to know that he needs to fix them. And the way that we do that in our house is that I put it back in his tray. 
And when he gets a few minutes of time, maybe he's waiting for me between classes or at the end of the, end of the day or something, he can pull out all those papers and look for the colored pen. And anything that he has missed, he will fix. Um, and then he will take that paper and put it right back up where he turns in his papers. And then I'll grab it again. So this time, if I grab it and I see he's filled in the ones that he didn't do before and he got them correct, now I get to put in an okay or a smiley face. Um, just something that both of you will know that this page has been completed, it is all correct, and you're ready to move on. Another paper that I had in his tray was a test he took. And I always have my boys not only put their names on their papers, but I also have them put the dates on their papers. And that way, if I forget to record something, we can go back and look at the stack of tests and find the correct paper and then record it in the grade book. So, and I'm gonna get out this test binder. So inside here I've got any video lesson guides that my boys will use and I don't really look at them a lot but then I also have tabs for the different subjects that they have tests for parent-led. So here's the math one. I've got the math tests that are not completed yet in the front and then the answers right behind and then the next tab is English. So everything I need to check all of his tests is right here in this binder. Once I have everything corrected and I put a grade at the top, then I need to record it in my grade book. And for parent-led, I just use um, a grade book that I bought at the store. I'm gonna show you this one. I bought this at Staples and it's for lesson plans, which I don't use that part. It also can be used for grades. Now I like this type of book, maybe it's because I used to be a teacher, but I have modified them for homeschooling. So I'm gonna open up a page that shows you how I use them. Okay, now you'll see this is written all over, but it's got all the necessary information in here. It's not necessarily pretty, but it gets the job done. So up here at the top, I had my son's name. I have first quarter, fifth grade, 2019, 2020. And then across the top, I've got months written, August, and then underneath 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th. That was our first week of school this last year. And I can easily tell how many weeks of school we've done. We had a day off for Labor Day. Um, it looks like we had a couple half days in here. So I just keep going until I have nine weeks done. That would be one fourth of our school year. So 45 days. I'll keep on this spread until I have 45 days of school done. And then down on the side, I have all the different subjects written. And then whenever I have a grade, like this one, he got a 94 on May 6th, what I'll do is I'll just go across the top until I find the date, and then I go down until I find that subject, and I record the grade. Now, I've got all kinds of different colors here, and all that means is that I was using a different color pen whenever I corrected that paper. I don't like to, um, color code things like in the grade book because if I don't have that certain pen in my hand or if I can't find that pen that stops me from getting the job done so I just use whatever pen um, is handy and if it's a test I will put a box around it if it is a chapter review or a quiz or something it doesn't get a box and so what I'll do later is when I average those scores anything that is a test I enter that score in twice instead of just once and so it gives it a little bit more weight um, another thing I use my gradebook for down here at the bottom you'll see I've got some things written this way those are field trips so 
on September 17th, we took a field trip tour of the police station nearby. And then later on, on the 27th, we went to Calder Farm and Dairy. So anything that we do gets recorded. I have our attendance, I have all our grades, and I have all our field trips all in one little book. Okay, so that's how I correct the parent-led work. Um, let's take a look at the online classes now. So I'm gonna show you some of my older son's work. Okay, first of all, I have in here a set of guided notes. Um, this was from eighth grade, and often in science and history, you will have guided notes as the teacher teaches, your child can write down the answers. This is an example of something that I don't check. Um, he doesn't even turn it in to me because I know that he is getting the answers directly from the teacher. So it's not a question of whether he understands or not. This is just something that he writes down as he listens to the lectures. So I don't even check these and I know he does well, he does fine, so that would be a waste of my time if I went through and looked at every one of those answers. Um, sometimes in science classes or even in other classes, the online teacher will go through a page with your child. It might be a chapter review or it might be a lab and they literally tell your child what to write and they're writing on their own workbook on the screen and so your child fills in the page. Well, this lab is three pages long and there's nothing in it that the teacher didn't tell them to write. So I have my son write with her and then I know he did these pages with her and I don't need to check them. I know they're correct. So those don't get correct. Okay, so now we are going to grade some papers or check some papers that are from online classes. So you need to go to bjupressonline.com. I like to leave it on a tab at the top of my screen so that it's easy to access. And you'll type in your username and password and log in, which I've already done. And um, up further on the screen, it would have a place for you to toggle between your kids to get to the right page. Each kid has their own page um, where it has all their courses listed and their grades recorded and things like that. Now, it will by default always be on student progress. And this one says, DLO getting started guide for all the different video course classes. That's because we haven't started our new year yet. Um, but what I want to do is take you to my review progress because that's the one you're going to want to use as you check papers. Now most of them will still say DLO getting started guide because I haven't done anything to them yet, but I have clicked through the introductory matter for Algebra 1. So I'm gonna take you there to show you how you can use the little check boxes to grade or correct papers easily. Whenever you click on Algebra 1, you don't want to click on the course name. That'll take you to a page that gives you information about the course in general. You want to click on the next review lesson item. So that will load and it took me to the last or the next thing that I had not checked. I'm going to scroll up a little and show you. There were things above it. And they're shaded out, you know, they're shaded. They're kind of like a gray or purple color. This is the first place that I haven't checked anything. And so if you keep up with checking your boxes, it will always take you to the next thing you need to do. So there are three boxes on each um, little, you can think of them as kind of like work boxes and then there are these three check mark boxes. In this section, in this work box, you've got mark complete, skip, or mark review complete. Your child will click on the mark complete whenever he does his work each day. So if he finishes this little work box, he'll put mark complete. And then he can scroll down to the next thing 
and it says he needs his student text. That's just a workbox that says what materials he needs. He will click Mark Complete. And then he will go to the next thing, which is a video. And after he watches it, he will click Mark Complete. So that keeps him always going to the very next thing. Um, you can also click Skip if you don't want your child to do a particular thing. And that won't even show up on his side of the platform. But the one you want to use as your check papers is Mark Review Complete. So this box says I'm supposed to check section 1.1 and it tells me all the specific numbers that need to be done. And then it's got a link right here. So I'm going to click on the link and on my computer it comes down here on the download bar and I'll touch that and there's the page from the teacher's manual with all the answers. And I don't see really well those small numbers, so I like to enlarge it so I can read it easily. And you will just take your child's paper, compare it to the answers here. Sometimes, sometimes around the edge here, there are more explanations. Um, let's say they couldn't fit the whole answer right here on the page. They might put a little bit more of a solution on the side or maybe it's a large thing, like this first section was supposed to be a diagram. So here's your diagram off to the side. When you're done correcting the paper, you can go back to the screen you were on. And in secondary math, they like to give them um, grade for homework so that they get something to show for what they do every day, not just tests and quizzes, but they also get a homework grade. So. You can go to this box over here that says how many they got right out of 20. And let's say he got 19 right. You click Submit. And now it says Grade Saved. So you have finished correcting that. You've already submitted your grade. And then you can mark that you have reviewed that item and you are done with that. Now I like to keep going and click on the next boxes until I get to the next assignment. So this is just materials. I don't need to check anything there. This is a student video, so I don't need to look at that. Here's another student video. And another one. And so I keep going until I get to the very next assignment. Okay. I probably won't need that one until tomorrow. But since I've marked all of the boxes before it that I've reviewed them, it will take me directly to this box the next time I need to see um, a link to correct my work. So at the bottom of each little box, they have this little double arrow pointing up. You can click on that to go to the top of the page or you can press the home key and it'll take you up to the top. If you click on home here, it'll take you to that first screen. Now we're back on the home screen and it by default has gone to student progress again. And you will see they all say DLO getting started guide because my son has not done anything yet for these classes this year. But if we click on my review progress, Algebra 1 says that the next review lesson item is the day 2 assignment. Because we've checked off those boxes, it will take us to the very next thing. So that's, that's a really helpful tip. If you start from the beginning of the year checking off boxes as you correct your students' work, you will save yourself a lot of time in finding those answer keys. Um, I'd like to show you now where that algebra grade went that we gave uh, my son for homework. So we're going to click on the course name this time. And if you get an overview and a syllabus down below and over here on the side you've got parent resources and then also gradebook. So that's what I'm going to click on now. Okay, so now we're inside the gradebook. I've just covered up my son's name here, but you can see right below the sticky note that we've got section 1.1 exercises and it says which ones. Um, he got a 19 out of 20, so that's a 95%. They are categorized 
Um, so you can have different weights for tests or quizzes um, for other projects. So they are set by default, but if you wanted to change things, you could go in and you could change the gradebook weights right here. If you wanna add in items to the course and something that they didn't give your child a grade for and you want to add that in, you could put that there. Um, you assign the grading periods so that the computer automatically will take any, any score within those um, weeks that you assign and put them in that particular grading period. So I like to assign quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. You can do that as you go. Let's say you get finished with your first quarter, that's when you can assign the first quarter and put the dates in that you start and finish it. And then you don't have to assign the others until you're ready for them. And then you can always print out a list of the grades or export them and it will average your child's grade for him and that way you can um, get the, the information that you need for a transcript or a report card. So we never did pull up the answer key online for this earth science section review, but you would check it the same way. You would just go under a different class and pull up a different answer key. Um, this particular paper has a lot of red pen on it, but that doesn't mean that my son's answers were wrong. I just gave him a little extra information that um, took his, his answers a little bit further, gave him a little bit more feedback so that he can be learning. Um, so whether you use red pen or purple or green or whatever color, um, go ahead and, and check your children's work frequently. They really need you to do that. You can't be hands off with homeschooling. You really need to roll up your sleeves. And just like we require them to do their job each day, we need to do ours. And part of our job is to give them feedback. So I know it's not fun, but keep up with it. Keep checking those papers. When you get behind, just dive right in again. You can do this. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks a lot.